Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithkin. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Inject Creativity Live. (laughs) (laughs) This is a show based on creativity for all in education with a focus on Adobe tools. Even if we haven't got the technology working well, we still have a great message for you. And welcome, Erin. Thanks, Tim. And welcome to everyone who's joined us live and is watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 72nd episode of Inject Creativity Live, recorded in August of 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi, share where you are from and add comments throughout the show. We have Tim Cosgrove from Canada in the background monitoring our chat and he will share the most relevant comments as they come in. Let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives and we commit to building a brighter future together. Coming to you from Wurundjeri land in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yugara and Dugurapul people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our Techie Wiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hello, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we will be hearing from Adobe Education leader Kenneth Shinnerbury with an amazing Adobe Illustrator demo. Tim's going to share a quick Adobe Express tip. We'll be promoting the APAC Adobe Education Summit in September. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe-related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities, and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. Now it's time for a quick Inject Creativity Live Adobe Express tip. Adobe Express yep. Insiders. Yes, formerly known as Adobe Spark Insiders. Yes. There we are. Lovely. This is an amazing group, and you've been part of it uh, for, for a little while. Look at the numbers there, 87,000, yeah. just over 87,000 members. And every yeah, time I, I go I think I was it, one of the first couple of hundred people to join, I think. Yeah, and one of the foundation members almost. Um, There's always inspiration there as we scroll through and have a look at some of the comments and chats that have come in there. And I just love it because I'm I'm picking up new ideas and new inspiration about how to use Adobe Express, but more importantly, how it is actually being used by teachers around the globe, plus a bit of advertising it looks like as well, but maybe not. I haven't seen this yet, but there you go. That's all part of uh, working with with the Facebook. Uh, What's some of the great inspiration you've had by working with uh, the, that particular group there, Erin? Well, one of the, the things that I have quite enjoyed about the um, insiders group here on Facebook is that you get to see um, a lot of the examples of, of things that people create either for their own personal use, as you as Tim mentioned, sometimes the Express Insiders include things that people create for their own small businesses, um, but often you will also see some um, examples of some work that have been done with teachers. So teachers internationally um, will express appreciation, will share ideas, will collaborate, um, ask for um, input from others about the kinds of um, creative creations that they're doing and you know you often will see in this group iterative processes of someone posting something and then they'll get some input from others and then they'll post a tweak or another tweak or five different options and people will vote oh one and five my favorite for these reasons and there's that 
really wonderful creative process of, you know, there isn't you doing it. There's no um, mistakes that anybody makes. It's all, you know, largely that wonderful community spirit of people coming through and saying, oh, hey, I really like what you've done here. Have you thought about only having two colours instead of five? Or I recommend this particular um, shape that I've seen in Express. It would really, you know, unify your design. And it's really, really great to see. And you can see the link there, facebook.com slash groups slash Adobe Express Insiders. And we recommend that you join. Let's hear it from Clara, who's going to be promoting our summit coming up in September. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global education community programs, and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Thanks, Clara, for promoting the 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit, which is happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September, a school holiday period for most of you in Australia. But uh, one thing I will recommend is before you do come to the summit this year, I'm encouraging those of you who are living in Australia to go to SBS On Demand and look up the show Finding Creativity. So one of the main stars of this amazing documentary on creativity is our keynote presenter for the summit, Dr. Tim Patston, who, as Tim Kitchen mentioned in the clip that we have broadcast previously, is Australia's leading researcher in the area of creativity and innovation. Do you know what, Erin? I had the delight of spending pretty much most of the day last Thursday with Dr. Tim Patston, interviewing him on camera uh, for some content that we're creating for the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. 10 years on from when we interviewed Sir Ken Robinson, because I think uh, Tim Patston is um, is kind of like the Australian version of Sir Ken Robinson with the, the, the amount of thought and research that he has done in the, in the area of creativity in education. He's certainly Australia's leader in that particular area. So looking forward to having him as a keynote. Yeah, what a wonderful and flattering comparison for him because, yeah, Sir Ken Robinson was a juggernaut in that area. Um, so Finding Creativity is a beautifully produced documentary on creativity and both Tim and I recommend that you give it a watch. Hi, everyone. My name's Dr Tim Patston and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Hey, we recently launched a new resource that uh, maps Adobe Education Exchange teaching resources to the Australian curriculum called School Projects and Lesson Ideas with Adobe. So please look up adobe.ly forward slash ac dash projects, that's projects with an S, to make the most of this new resource and share it with your colleagues. And um, we've already had a quick demo of this in previous shows, but look up and you can, I actually had a meeting with Akara, I meet with Akara once, uh, once a term, uh, with a whole lot of people who do similar roles to me in different companies. It's just wonderful to see ACARA reaching out to industry to make sure that the curriculum is relevant and we're having those, those regular cadence of meetings together. And in the last meeting, I actually shared this resource with all of those people who were part of that committee. And it was terrific to, to see that um, we're engaging with the curriculum as much as teachers have to, but to see ACARA engaging with mm. us in industry as well. That's really pleasing. That's so positive. You know, Tacey Trowbridge, he's also a global leader in our education team. She will be part of our summit coming up in September, and she's got a little word for you now. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, head of Adobe's Thought Leadership and Advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. And if you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. You may have noticed a number of new lightning learning courses on and other resources that are now featured on the Adobe Education YouTube channel and the Adobe Education Exchange. So one of these courses is titled Building Community in Any Class with Adobe Express. So here is Adobe Evangelist Martin Sin so Cisneros, uh, there we go, from the US to share more. <laughs> Whether you're getting ready for back to school or needing to bond in the middle of the school year, community building in any classroom is the key to student success. Research shows that when an educator creates a classroom community activity, students benefit in myriad of ways. In a classroom where students feel valued and heard, students tend to 
take more academic risk, students become more collaborative and will foster positive relationships with their peers. Students who feel welcome will take an ownership of their school environment and their learning. You ready? Let's get creating. It was lovely to meet Martin uh, in April this year. I had the opportunity of being in San Francisco for a week with the new Adobe Education Evangelists that have joined the team and helping to train them in the work that they're doing, the amazing work that they're doing. And you've met most of them now pretty much on all the Lightning Learning courses. And so uh, we're looking forward to hearing more from them in the future. Adobe Illustrator is one of Adobe's most popular applications for graphic designers. And Tim recently caught up with Adobe Education leader Kenneth Shinabri for this Adobe Illustrator demo. Hi, folks. I'm very pleased to have Ken Shinaberry all the way from Europe with me today on the show. Ken has a background in advertising and education out of New York City, but since 2012, he's been working in Europe and he's currently working at the Digital Careers Institute in Germany. He's an influencer. He's very prominent on the Adobe Education Exchange and he's a regular Behance live streamer every Sunday through DYC Studios. Welcome, Ken. Hi, thank you for having me. It's great to have you. So tell us, Ken, first question, how long have you been using Adobe tools for? Oh, God, quite a while. I hate to date myself. Uh, I started using Adobe Photoshop back in 1994, which is pretty crazy. So I've seen I've seen all the advancement and seen all the new updates and just really love the Creative Cloud. It's just amazing what uh, Adobe's created. Ken, let's jump into your demo. Tell us, what, what are we looking at here, Ken? So this is one of the uh, illustrations that I created during... Uh, my live streams on Behance. So this is the Maneki Neko. I think many of you guys have seen, you know, the lucky cat. And this was a challenge that I actually created. I gave the line art away to my subscribers on Behance, and then they could actually recreate it, which was really amazing. Currently, I'm working on the Daruma. So this is what we've done for the past couple streams. So again, very Asian inspired, something really cool. Uh, added my own DYC studios, uh, kind of like inspired logo right there and just to show you a couple other things that i've done during streams as well too obviously i think you guys know this character right there that happy little italian guy mario and then maybe you're familiar with some old school technology i've created like uh characters using adobe illustrator as well too and if you're a gamer you might recognize tracer from the popular blizzard entertainment game overwatch something for the uh anime lovers out there and then my punk Cinderella, which is really cool. And this kind of is kind of awesome because uh, not do I, I not always create line art in black. Sometimes it's in color. And if you're doing that, you kind of have to really kind of keep track of your layers and order your layers. And then this last one that I would show you right here, and this is probably about like 3,000 plus layers in Adobe Illustrator. It gets pretty insane. But what I wanna do today is something simple. So we're gonna start out with this little simple character. I did this back in 2014 and wasn't sure what I was gonna to create today, but I was like, ah, oh, I love Hiccup. He's a cool little guy. Perfect. So I have my stylus right here and you could be using a mouse. In fact, I started out with a mouse uh, back in the day, but we're gonna use the pencil tool and I'm just gonna set this up to basic and also take the stroke right here. Let me click on this. I always like rounded ends. I don't know why. I don't like the capped ends. Sometimes I'll use them. And we're just gonna start slowly building hiccup. And one thing I think, uh, we'll see if we actually get the line perfect the first time. The other part that I like about Illustrator is that you can always adjust the points and the nodes. So if you make a mistake, it's pretty easy to adjust. In fact, I probably will kind of fix that in a little second right here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So just click right here and I'm going to go with four. Maybe we'll take it up to, let's take it up to seven, get a little bit thicker. And there's different tools right here that you can smooth this line just to show you. I'm just going to go like this. And then maybe I might even remove some of the nodes just to show you. Okay. That's a little bit smoother. I'm just gonna edit the line a little bit more. I'm just gonna, there's a little booger right here. I always call the little ends where if uh, I get a little extra node, a booger, I don't know why. I think it's from working at Nickelodeon. I tend to uh, say things that are kid friendly. So I feel like, you know, the less nodes and handles, 
the better. So we're just going to make this right here something like that. That's perfect. All right. I love that. And then I'm just going to zoom in and we're going to continue the drawing on. But I'm going to rotate the canvas. Rotating the canvas is also very helpful as well, too, if you're creating, because we tend to draw better when we're drawing down and we have more control over our stroke. So I'm going to take this back into the pencil right here. I don't think we're going to get this completely 100% done, but just to show you guys how easy it is to create. And if you ever have problems, I see some boogers on the end right there that I need to clear up. A couple extra notes. I think there's two. My students will always say that I've got a really good eye that I notice when there's extra little nodes floating around. Okay. All right. And then I'm just going to maybe erase this one little node right here. And then we're just going to take the handle and pull the handle out just like this. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate the canvas back. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep the canvas right there. And we're just going to... And I said to draw turning the opposite way, but just to get those right there. And there's a couple little boogers right there on the end right there. We'll just clear that up. Now, just to show you guys what I would do after this, there's different things that I would do. I'm just going to select this. Oh, I got to unlock that layer real quick. We're just going to name this horn. Double click. And name it horn. Because, you know, if I were working with Tim and I sent Tim this illustration and Tim needed to do or change something, it's good to have everything kind of labeled. So, and I think collaboration is great. So we're just going to change the color of the horn real quick to red. It's going to go back to black eventually, but just so I can see, and then I'm going to click on the body outline and I'm just going to go up here to object and then expand. And then there we go. Now this enables me to kind of clean up this little layer right here. So I'm just going to erase this right here erase this right here and then i'm using my direct select tool now i'm just going to select that little piece right there hit delete twice and bada bing bada boom there you go and now we'll go back to the horn and we'll turn it back to black now one thing that i'll do when i get into the coloring stage we probably won't get that far but i would go into it and turn it into live paint and then I would fill it in and I would create this in the bottom and then I would build in gradients and shadows and shades in between the line art and the flat base color. So that would be in the middle and I'd have layers that would be like, you know, highlights and shadows in between. And then I'm just going to place it and you might need to rotate it a little bit. You know, again, it's just kind of getting it where it kind of lines up and looks right. And then right here, we're going to do the same. Move that one. Oops. See this one, we might have to rotate a little bit. There we go. All right. And something like this. We'll rotate this one just a little bit. I'm just wondering, Ken, for the sake of time, is there a is there a finished version that you've already done that uh, with this guy? No, unfortunately not. I wish uh, I was debating about what to do, but just to show you, I mean, it, 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 pretty much this is kind of like the basic. And if you follow these steps so far, you can pretty much create almost anything. And to me, that's kind of cool. Like knowing where to do your cuts, knowing how to place things, uh, the different types of shapes that you can use as well, too, and how like you can go from with just the weight tool right there, just the width right there, just to add it a little bit more weight. And you can see the difference right here, how that just kind of affects things and makes it a little bit better. So theoretically, with this guy, it probably would take me maybe maybe 30, 40 minutes to get him completely done. But you have an idea of what it would do. And just to kind of maybe explain this character a little bit. So once I would have all the steps, I'm just going to turn this off right here. What I would do is I would select all, whoops, unlock, just for kind of like, and then I would go, I would duplicate it, and then I would lock it, and then I would go object, live paint, make, and then what I would do is name this base, color 
And this is if we were continuing on with, you know, the other guy, we do the same kind of process right here. And then we could just choose any color. I don't know. What's your favorite color, Tim? What do you like? I, I like orange. It's my orange. favorite at the moment. Okay. So we can make maybe an orange Maneki Neko cat like that. And this is, this is the same thing that I would do if I were continuing with Hiccup. I would just kind of click right here. And now we kind of have this kind of Garfield looking little kitty cat right there. But very easy to color. Like the, once you get the line art done and you've expanded all the lines, you just duplicate it. Make sure it's all in one, one like layer or one like little folder. And then, you know, just do uh, object make live paint. And then you can do the coloring process. Good on you, Ken. All the very best. And thanks again for your time. Thank you, Tim. It's been a pleasure. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya Averick from the Global Education Team here at Adobe for Education. I'm so excited that you are watching Inject Creativity Live. Please check us out with the Adobe Creative Educator Program and be on the lookout for all the amazing challenges that we have every month. See you soon. We currently have over 1,700 Australia and New Zealand teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator course and close to 56,000 who have enrolled globally. So if you'd like to be guided through level one, Tim and I run a Be a Creative Educator course on almost a monthly basis. So look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator. That link is in the chat for you all for more information. And please share this site with your colleagues and wider education networks. The next opportunity to join us is on Tuesday, the 16th of August, 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Of course, if you look up adobe.ly slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE level one. The Creativity for All course is one of the many great on-demand courses on the Adobe Education Exchange. Hi there, it's Claudio from the Adobe Global EDU team. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, join the Adobe Creative Educator program. Next Adobe Teach Meets is happening on Thursday the 18th of August. Adobe Teach Meets are a great opportunity to spend quality time with an Adobe expert to learn a particular app and how it can be used in the classroom. There are up to five different Adobe and Education Workshop topics that are available as options at every Teach Meet session. So please look up adobe.ly forward slash Teach Meets to find out more, register and share this unique professional learning opportunity with your colleagues. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. If you are on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe and Education and the wider community. We have a monthly newsletter that is reaching, well, technically just about 50,000 but realistically, when we look at the stats, 31,000 teachers actually get access and open up this newsletter, which is really exciting uh, to think that we've actually got such a good reach. Uh, and that's amazing in this region of the world. So complete the contact form at adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC. That's A-P-A-C. If you don't already get this publication each month and join the email list. I think it's time for some very familiar music. And hopefully that's working. I can hear it in the background. So let's bring Jerry back up onto the screen and we'll bring Tim Cosgrave up as well. Our next Inject Creativity Live event, episode 74, will feature Victorian Adobe Education Leader Joel Aarons. And episode 75 will feature Adobe Education Leader Emeritus Brett Salakis. We Is will be recording these episodes on Wednesday, the 17th of August at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. So please join us live if you can. And for those watching live, get ready to move to adobe.ly forward slash edu dash meet dash APAC for our brief fireside chat on a platform that will hopefully be a bit kinder to Tim, who's been an absolute <laughs> through this episode. Good save, Erin. Well done. Thank you. And thank you to Erin and to Jerry and to Tim for putting this together 
We've got Rob the robot who's going to do a, an official sign off of this particular episode. So give us all a wave, guys, before Rob the robot takes over. See you later, everyone. Cheers. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us now via adobe.ly slash edu-meet-apac for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters and other audience members. During this informal chat, you will be able to complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and topics and use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.